Okay, welcome back to the Loss Prevention News Network. We're here in Philadelphia at the National Retail Federation's Protect Conference, and Amber is literally scooping up my next two guests from just off camera. But let me start by saying, we're here in Philly all of this week, Right down the hall are the education sessions. And here at the NRF Protect Conference, they're talking about everything from organized retail crime to the latest fraud issues, especially with that shift in liability with EMV, and also all of the ways that we're gonna build our teams, develop people in the organization, and make our industry and the overall retail operation work a lot better. So right now I'm joined by two co-MCs and very special guests. The first to my right, is Adele Sage, who's the CEO and president of Universal Surveillance Systems. And this, to my left. We're photobombing you. Hello, hey, photobomb. Hey, John Grander. John Grander. Oh, just again. And there's Amber. I'm like, wait, wait, who's behind me? They're fixing my jacket or something. Thank you for that. See, that is the way, right? For all of you newscasters, that is the way you bring in the special guests in a fun way. Okay. Reel it in, Joe, reel it in, right? To my left, newly hired Chief Operating <laughs> Officer, Claude Veraville with Universal Surveillance Systems, formerly with the Lowe's companies. Claude, thanks for being here. Thank you, Joe. So Adele, I wanna start with you. Um, you are, you've never looked better, by the way. Ah, oh, thank you. You were out for a conference or so. You had cancer, you fought it, you're back. I saw you at Rila, now you're here in Philly at the NRF conference. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. back. Thank you. How are you feeling? Feel, never felt better. It's awesome. Never felt better. Feel great with the help of the man upstairs. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is, I have to say this, you know, the, 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 the outpour of love and support and uh, well wishes and the hospital visits has just been overwhelming. This is my real family. This is, you know, just the, the LP community and what they've done for me is what got me here and with the help of the man upstairs it's just it's been a, a, an amazing journey I, I couldn't wait until I got back uh, real I was li a little limping and I rough I'm feeling stronger than I've ever felt before in my life so I'm glad to be back that's fantastic and you know I I'll say this uh, since we're both in Southern California and, and full disclosure Adele and I text back and forth quite a bit quite a bit at the helm the entire time making decisions from wherever he was off to whatever appointment etc and so it's great to have you back. Now, Claude, you. you're new to the company. You've been on board, uh, I think, an entire week. Yeah, a week. That's about right, week. yes. Okay. <laughs> Officially, so, yes. So, so I have nothing to do with yeah. the gray hair yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, sprouting out everywhere, yes. <laughs> um, I have that problem, too. Yeah. So the first question I have to ask you, now going from uh, the retail environment, which you were you know, clearly one of the iconic leaders within our industry, now into becoming a service provider and taking that feedback and your learnings from the retail life and bring it in. Adele has a history of bringing in some of the top retail people to run the organization. Yeah. How does that translate for you? And what is your just initial uh, impressions as you yeah. come into the organization? It's very simple for me, Joe. It's all about people leadership. It's all about getting the right people, the right talent, getting them on the right seats on the bus and driving performance and being a customer-centric organization. It's all about delivering that kind of service that our customers expect. Like retail is all about understanding the customer needs. This is no different. We understand what the customer needs are. I hope I bring that perspective from an LP practitioner, having been in the business for 35 years. But more importantly, the team that we've got on board already and are looking to add to our team, I've met more people on his staff now that sell that were practitioners. When I add up the years, right. it's probably going to exceed well over 100 years or so. Wow. So we really understand the insights, the needs, the dynamics of our industry, how fast it evolves, how fast things change, and be able to adapt and innovate for these people and provide them the tools, resources, technology that they're looking for. That's, that's amazing. And, and the company, Adele, you've always been really amazing at meeting with people out in the field and retailers to take the feedback really right out of their mouth and, and from their best thinking, bringing it back into your R&D program and de developing new products. So what types of things are, you know, sort of top of mind for you here at the show or what's maybe some of the next gen that you're looking at? Yeah, without a doubt. We've, we've always lived on the philosophy, uh, listen, deliver, and solve. And, you know, those have been our core values for the past 21 years, just going out and uh, listening to what the customer needs are, solving the problem and delivering on that promise. And, and this year is no different. We, we have our innovation room. This is our fifth year running. It's always been cutting edge technology that we like to bring to the 
forefront this year is even more exciting because what we've done is integrated all the technologies. We've taken the EAS, now allowed it to communicate with RFID, allowed it to communicate with IP, allowed it to communicate with uh, wireless access control, all in one platform. Nice. And this is exactly what the retailers have been asking for for many, many years. And that's kind of really the, the forefront of our technologies, trying to listen and deliver something that they could use today. Not, not 10 years from down the road. Right, yeah, absolutely. And, and you've always just brought it to market and, and made things happen. So, Claude, with your retail experience, and I'm sure both of you have seen the net latest National Retail Security Survey from Dr. Hollinger, and it, it shows that the, the shrink numbers are high again this year, not much change from 2014 statistics, but it does show this pattern of external theft outpacing internal. And, uh, through my whole career, it was always internal, always uh, led in terms of right. causation and, and shrinkage. As you look at surveys like the NRSS and maybe some of the other um, research that's done through the industry, how do you see things evolving? I mean, how do you how does that set your direction and compass for what's next? I, I think we've seen a lot evolve with ORC, and now of course it's gone and migrated to .com. I've said for years that the criminals migrated to dot-com and e-commerce before customers ever did. And that's going to continue to be a challenge, but they're getting the goods out of the store in some capacity before they do that. So I think, I think what's going to happen is we're going to look at it holistically. Practitioners have a lot of needs when it comes to control and shrink. Some is operational. We can develop technology for that. Point of sale, errors made, inadvertent losses by cashiers that don't pay attention to what's being scanned. Internal theft will always be there, but we're going to look for solutions that protect our employees and keep them safe. Think about that for a minute. Today, I see more and more aggressive behavior by shoplifters over the, probably the last two years since right. Ferguson, where people, cashiers are being beat up, hit, smacked, just for trying to do a receipt validation. Right. So we've got to develop technology that stops it at the inception, at the point of selection, not just the exit doors. Right. So we're going to continue to innovate and look for ways to keep the practitioners, their workforce safe from such the aggressive behavior we're seeing with externals. That's fantastic information. And, and uh, you know, th there's that, escalation right it starts at the approach and then it's a verbal altercation then a physical altercation and you know we're in this really dynamic environment right now where it's restorative justice and we're mm -hmm. we're trying to decriminalize theft in some ways exactly. so the the preventative becomes that much more important Difficult, right? right exactly yeah, so we can actually change the behaviors yeah. how do you address um, some of the the more advanced is people you know it, we we're we start with tags, but the tags you're putting in today are really some of the latest and greatest technology for, it's tracking, it's audible, it's, correct, correct. tell me a little bit about this technology to defeat, not just the amateur, you know, mom shop Co looking something, correct. but the, the booster. So, so the, the, the challenge is, how, what do you do with the tag, right? Because the tag has always been a reactive, right. we're trying to take a more proactive approach um, now that you, you see more challenges going on, especially with, with the e-commerce, um, and trying to bring visibility. You, you know, Claude and I were talking about how irritating it gets when, when, it, when a consumer purchases a product. I was a consumer that purchased a product over the holidays, went to go pick up my TV, rented a U-Haul truck because we wanted to watch the TV over the holidays, oh, right. and we didn't find the TV. Right. right? It was just a, it was very frustrating. So now the technology we're building on not only encompasses the, the, the EAS, the GPS, the Bluetooth technology, but it also goes into mainstream inventory control to give visibility. Yeah. So if we could track the product within the store, yeah. let you know where the product currently resides, and if it ever leaves your store, we'll, we'll let we we'll notify you, tie it into a video, tie it into your yeah. IP, nice. and then also if the product sells and it hasn't been removed, we're able to stop it before it leaves yeah. the, 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 that transaction. Yeah, I've gone as far as to tell Donut's team this week that number one place where the puck's heading and already really there with retailers is. Build this technology that gives us inventory track and accuracy. Right. Uh, because the experience with e-commerce people, they buy it online, they're accessing your inventory management system without realizing it. They think you have five widgets, they buy five widgets, you charge them five widgets. They come to the store after work, there was only two. Right. Not a good experience for the right. customer. Right. So to be a customer-centric company, we have to really stay focused on what the consumers expect, what the practitioners want. And it's really going to be about operations right. and have being better in stock positions and then that ultimately provides you a better shrink performance Correct. in the yeah. long term. So. And the EAS is just an after fact, right? right? It really it, is. It, yeah. it really is. It, it's, you know, we're going to give you the visibility that they've never had before. Right. Yeah. So hearing that, and it's such a, a valuable uh, topic to go down this path for a minute, you're really talking about 
this is not just working with the loss prevention practitioners. You're actually working embedded with operators, with technology yeah. people, with the supply chain uh, folks. How would you recommend, based on your experiences, that a loss prevention person actually broach that subject with them and say, hey, look, I can provide you a lot of visibility it's if great, you ever have. a great question, Joe. So insight to the real world of corporate America. Thank you. When I would meet my CEO, my boss at Lowe's with my one-on-one -on -one sessions, ADD is about within four minutes. Yeah. Whenever I talked about improving in-stock position and providing the customer a surety that when they come in, the, the widget will be there, he perked up. Whenever you talk about reducing out-of-stocks, he perked up. Driving comp sales, he perked up. Talk about shrink, eh, not so much. So that's what we got to talk about as, as, as an industry and innovators is figure out how to improve that through technology, through systems, while reducing payroll and labors by doing manual stock accounts. Right, Adele? And, and what I'm seeing is, you know, uh, uh, LP community is being asked more and more and more to act in operation role. We're, we're no longer, you know, quotas and how many bad guys we caught and how much, it's, it's really more operational. So we're trying to give them the tools that they need in order to be able to act and make intelligent business decisions. Because at the end of the day, it's about making intelligent business decisions. Mm -hmm. We're trying to give them the visibility that maybe didn't exist previously. Right. Right. And we're also working with IT and giving them that tools and giving them that empowerment mm -hmm. so they can make intelligent business decisions to be able to execute. Right. Yeah, so, so incredibly important. I could stand here and we could talk about this all day. I love these topics. And I know that you're right here in Philly at the NRF Protect Conference. You spend a lot of time in the field. I see your folks everywhere. So Universal Surveillance Systems really is the one of the key places that you should consider talking to the technology experts, talking to the people in the field, talk to people like Claude and Adele and the other 100 years of experience they have out in the field right now. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Joe. I'm Joe LaRocca. You can follow me at LaRocca J. Don't forget to tweet Amber and I your questions at hashtag LPNN. And we're going back over to Gus Downing right now.